The incoming president of Zambia has invited the leader of the opposition in Zimbabwe, Nelson Chamisa, to attend his inauguration. Hakainde was part of the organization that represents uh, opposition parties in Africa. The former leader of the Democratic Alliance, Musimai Manu, was once refused entry into Zambia by the outgoing president in uh, Zambia, Edgar Lungu. My money went to Zambia with the aim of attending the court hearing of Hichilema Hakainde after he was arrested for failure to give way to a convoy of Edgar Lungu. And I'm joined now by both leaders, uh, Nelson Chamisa and Musi Maimani. Very good evening to you both and thank you so much for speaking to us. Good evening and uh, good evening to the people of Africa and uh, to my brother and friend Nelson Chamisa. It's great to be with you. Mr. Chamisa? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Africa and my brother Musi. Uh, thank you very much for having us. Let me start with you, Mr. Maibani. We've just recounted um, what you experienced there. What, what do you think of this outcome? Is it poetic justice? Your reaction to these results, were you surprised that it could happen now in this day and era, given the difficulties that opposition parties face? Yeah, absolutely. I think, first of all, all of us as Africans must celebrate this result. It is the true testimony to the fact that democracy is still the most peaceful way to transfer power from one party to the next. Secondly, I think Africa is riddled with... Um, leaders who seem to want to hold on to power and use all sorts of means. And uh, you're correct in recalling the day I went to Zambia and in the way the Zambian government on the day acted in a manner that was unconstitutional and illegal. And let alone my own experience, but the experience of Hakiende himself, if you'll recall, he was detained without trial for an incident that was simply uh, ridiculous at best. And it tells you that democracy is fragile. But I want to applaud the steel of leadership that is within him that meant that despite the obstacles, having run for presidential elections five times previously, that ultimately perseverance, knowing that the struggle for freedom is long and hard, today we can celebrate. And I think to me, not only do we draw a celebration for it, but we draw profound inspiration for the region as we've already started to see the change in Malawi, we're seeing the change in Zambia, we're anticipating change in Zimbabwe, and uh, in due course, South Africa will be next. Mm. Mr. Chamisa, perhaps just to follow on that train of thought, what some see as the humiliation of Edgar Lungu, you've just heard Mr. Maimani uh, reflect uh, on what some have called strongman politics. Looking back at your own journey and what you're witnessing today, what are your thoughts on this? Well, thank you very much. I must say that um, what we have seen uh, in Zambia is uh, an inspiration, an encouragement, but also a fresh dose of uh, uh, excitement on the part of the people of Africa. We have shown that we are a continent that has standards, a continent that has rules, a continent that is capable of running credible elections. And Zambia has just shown us what is possible. Zambia has done what Zimbabwe has been failing to do. We are seeing the triumph of uh, strong institutions ahead of strong men. We are seeing the triumph of big ideas ahead of uh, big men. And what I am seeing in Zambia is what we would want to see in Zimbabwe what we would want to see in SADC and on the African continent, where citizens have the right to define the destiny of their nations, where citizens are able to vote in a free and fair election, and state institutions are able to honor, respect, and validate the will of the people. So Zambia has been a good example, and we know that uh, it started with Malawi. It has been this fresh breeze that has been blowing within the region and we hope that it will continue to engulf and galvanize the entire continent. Mm. Mr. Maimani, I'd like to get you to share your thoughts on, you mentioned the winds of change hopefully coming to South Africa and one would draw what would be a very banal, I'd imagine, um, 
should I say, similarities between Mr. Hichilema and our own president. There's always been this thing about having a leader in power who's got his own resources so that he is not tempted towards corruption. So for one part, we mentioned this with our international news editor. This is the reason why Mr. Hichilema himself faced opposition, uh, or, or should I say the trust deficit in being voted in. Do you think that these winds of change now are coming towards institutionalizing multi-party democracy in mm. the SADC region, for instance, and are people beginning to trust opposition parties now? I think um, there are two observations one can draw. The first is that this is history repeating itself. If you'll remember even early with Samora Machel, you then moved on to Kenneth Kaunda, and then you had that kind of wind of change happening even in Zimbabwe, and then South Africa was last. So I think that's a historic moment that is occurring, secondly. Secondly, I think that more than anything, it's this idea of economic reform. Often, it's not only by the work of the opposition, but the economic dire strait of where these countries find themselves under in the current leadership that we've got. So if you reflect on the state of Zambia, you'll remember that unemployment is high and Zambia is highly indebted. If you look at South Africa, we are now heading towards a very serious crisis of employment and worse amongst young people. The young people who voted in Zambia were in their graduation gowns, reminding all of us that just because you get an education doesn't mean you're guaranteed a job. And that often inspires young people to turn out and vote for change because it's their future that's been impacted. And then thirdly, I think what begins to happen is that we are all Africans starting to celebrate the fact that in a democratic state, it is not even whether the leader has got resources or not that hinders them from corruption, because then we must presume that the, the people who are corrupt are generally poor. It can't be. It is the ability of the leader to be able to stand up in the face of the corrupt people in their own parties. And so what invariably happens is that leaders and citizens cannot tolerate it anymore and simply sit back and say, we have our democratic right to use. And so the lesson here for us is South Africa is that one, we have the power to vote and we have to exercise it. That's why postponement of elections is not a good idea. And secondly, that ultimately we've got to exercise that accountability amongst ourselves by electing leaders directly. Because one of the lessons from Zambia is that the people of Zambia have said, I choose this president, which didn't leave it to the party to be able to decide that they could directly express that it is true in Zimbabwe. It ought to be true in South Africa. That's why you must amend the electoral law so that people have, can give a mandate to a leader to lead them. So, Mr. Chamisa, what will make this gesture likely to be extended to other African countries, as Mr. Maimani is speaking here? How do we level the playing field in the lopsided competitive party systems when we look at the dominant governing parties? Well, what, yes, what's very clear is that um, we are beginning to see um, the cascading of this very positive uh, wave on the African continent. As you are aware, the African continent is a continent of values, a continent of ideals, a continent of a promise, the liberation promise. So we are built on the foundation of our liberation founding fathers, those who liberated this great continent, the Kwame Krumahs, the Nelson Mandela's, the then um, a clear leaders like Julius uh, Kambarage Malim Nyerere, they had a view, they had a vision. And that vision was to see Africa being able to articulate a future, a common future for itself. So we are building on that liberation promise. But for that liberation promise to be punctuated, to be continued, and also to be elevated, there has to be the democratic process and the transformation process that comes with structural changes, that comes with institutional changes, but also entrenching this fundamental role of institutions not to temper with the will of the people. We want to see the bullet moving away from invalidating the power of the ballot. We want to see the will of the people being respected so that we do not have the elite roughshodding on the citizens, like we have seen here in Zimbabwe, where people vote, but they are punished for voting. They are also manipulated in terms of their outcome. So that can only be a way of strengthening institutions, but like original bodies, 
Mm. Such as Sadak. We need to make sure that Sadak plays its important role, not to side with a club of those who would want to manipulate the will of the people, but to side with the people. Look at what happened in Malawi. Sadak had endorsed the Malawian election, but the institutions within Malawi itself invalidated that vote because it was an invalid one. There had been that typexing of the election result. We want to see strong institutions coming in, kicking in, to support the citizens, to support the will of the people, to support the vet that people would have given on a particular election. Thank you so much for your time. Wish we had more to speak about the role of opposition parties. Musi Maimani, leader of uh, One South Africa Movement and Natsun Chamisa, leader of Zimbabwe Opposition MDC Alliance. Thank you very much.